The nervous system is a network of nerves that coordinates the actions of an animal and transmits signals between different body parts. There are two major divisions of the nervous system, the central and peripheral. The word peripheral means outside, so when we talk about the peripheral nervous system, we're talking about all the nerves outside of the central nervous system. And that's what I'm focusing on in this clip, the central nervous system. Put simply, the central nervous system integrates information that it receives from the outside world via the peripheral nervous system and coordinates activity of various parts of the body. So it's involved in processing and interpreting incoming information as well as decision making and sending out neural information that initiates action. Central nervous system consists of two parts, the brain and the spinal cord. So the brain is responsible for memory storage, memory retrieval, attention, our ability to focus on a task at hand while suppressing irrelevant or less important information, language in terms of our ability to convey meaning and understand others, our visual and spatial awareness, the executive function in terms of our ability to plan, make decisions, to prioritise. But it's also responsible for our vital functioning. It does this by receiving information from the peripheral nervous system and it'll make subtle adjustments in terms of our water content, our iron content, body temperature, digestion, respiration, etc. The other major component of the central nervous system is the spinal cord which has three major functions, a sensory, motor and reflexive function. So using the example of touch let's demonstrate what we mean by the sensory function of the spinal cord. Let's say I run a warm bath for my daughter and I want to get a sense of how hot the bath is before I put her, put her in because I might need to top it up with some more cold water. So I put my hand in the bath my hand contains a series of sensory receptors in my skin which detect the heat or the temperature of the bath and this sensory information will be conveyed via the somatic nervous system to my spinal cord. Now my spinal cord acts as a conduit. It will relay this information via a series of afferent tracts and when we talk about afferent basically means conveying information or sensory information towards the brain. So my spinal cord will convey the afferent information to my somatosensory cortex which will process how hot the bath is. In terms of the motor function of the spinal cord, well we know that people who suffer damage to their spinal cord have reduced functionality, particularly in terms of movement, and the higher up the damage, the more functionality is lost. So let's just say that I want to choose to go for a walk. My prefrontal cortex makes that decision. The motor cortex will actually initiate that efferent information, and by efferent, of course, we mean conveying information in the form of movement away from the brain to the body. So that efferent information will descend down the spinal cord and exit at the relevant point, entering our somatic nervous system, enabling voluntary movement. So the third function of the spinal cord is the reflex arc, which is an adaptive response that maximises our chances for survival. So let's use the example of a hand inadvertently making contact with a lit cigarette. So the sensory receptors in my hand, let's say, will process this information in terms of the heat and the somatic nervous system will convey this information to the relevant part of the spinal cord. The interneurons in my spinal cord will trigger a motor response and this efferent information will travel down to my bicep and I will quickly flex my arm and move my hand away from the lit cigarette. 
Now, all this occurs independently of the brain. And again, it's an adaptive response that will minimize the damage caused. So, ultimately, this pain information will be sent up to my somatosensory cortex, where I will say, ow, and we will process this pain information.